Hi everyone, I want to introduce you today to Emily Robertson. She's with Alpersfit for the past two and a half years and she just finished her master's degree in running kinematics and more specifically she studied trail runners for a full year. So she's got all the knowledge to help you become a better runner. So Emily, today we're going to chat about our methodology at Alpersfit and uh, that's called uh, polarized, training. polarized training which is the 80-20 principle where we do 80% of our runs in a very slow heart rate zone and 20% of the runs are in a high um, intensity zone. So um, what is a slow run and how do you measure it? A slow run is anything that happens um, in heart rate zone 1 or 2. Um, so that's you want to be aiming for um, about heart rate 135, somewhere around there. Um, there's certain tests that you can do to establish exactly which zone, um, what the threshold of your zone should be. But you want to stay away from heart rate zone 3. That's when you go out, you go for a run and it, it doesn't quite feel like a speed session, but you also come back slightly fatigued. And that, that's when you know you've been in heart rate zone 3 and that's the zone of no improvement and injuries. The so-called black hole. The black hole zone. And then your heart rate zone four and five, that's where all your quality training sessions happen, your speed work, your hills, it is going to be at a slightly higher heart rate. And Christian, I want to ask you, as a, as a trail runner, as an ultra athlete, if a lot of our clients um, ask, or a lot of our athletes ask us, you know, if I'm training in this low heart rate zone, which is a slightly slow, slower pace, how am I going to race um, at a faster speed? How does this work with polarized training? The one thing I can tell is, uh, I also didn't believe it, but I trained like this for five, six years, and then suddenly I became a, a better runner. And I've built a massive aerobic base, and it just feels like I never get tired. So when I race, yes, I'm most likely in zone three, but the benefit of zone two training, it, it metabolizes fat metabolism, it builds a stronger heart, it really creates, builds a diesel engine. And when you do any ultra race, in the end, you end up being in your zone, zone two anyway, because your body can't sustain a high intensity run for, for such a long time. So yeah, it's actually better to train slower and even slower than you would think. I know it's frustrating when people overtake you on the road, but wait until race day. And is it true, um, Christian, that for a race longer than eight hours, um, you need to be able to eat and to fuel yourself and that can't happen in a high heart rate zone? So when you race an, an endurance race of let's say eight hours, you need to fuel your body. It's very difficult to digest those, those food in your body if uh, you're at a ho higher heart rate zone uh, because all your blood is used to keep your, keep your limbs moving. Uh, so it is very important to train in that low aerobic zone, to train up your food. It's the, a good way to be able to digest your food. So what benefits is there, or what, what is harmful of, of training in that bl black hole, that zone three? So zone three um, is the zone where you start producing cortisol, which puts your body under a lot of stress. So if you are consistently training in zone three, there's never a moment for you to recover. Every time you step out the door and go for a run, you're putting your body under strain. Whereas polarized training, you're varying the type of stimulus you're exposing yourself to, with most of it being in zone two, it's the lower heart rate, recovery is taking place, there's still a training stimulus and an adaptation taking place, which is then paired nicely with your higher intensity um, training in the top 20%, but without consistently putting your body under strain, avoiding injuries. Trial Tip TV was sponsored by Emperor Asset Management.